Welcome in to the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology Podcast. Robert Glasscock, Thomas Miller, and we are going to talk about a, one of the more popular topics that we've covered on this podcast. What Robert came up with some time ago, the developmental arc. And we have a chart that shows a developmental arc structured next to the chart. That is in the show notes. You can download it, and it is something that you're going to want to grab a hold of so that you can follow along in this episode. And we have a listener question about the developmental arc, but before we listen to her question, Robert, would you just set us up and tell us what this thing called the developmental arc is? Yes, it's very easy. In order, you list the planets in order of the earliest degree first, and the next earliest degree second, and the third next, and so on, all the way to as we have here. So we're starting with all of the planets and the points, including the ascendant and the midheaven and part of fortune, if you wish, in order. And it be her <laughs> her developmental arc begins with the moon in Scorpio, and ends with her sun in Cancer, two water signs, and the lights, the sun and the moon, the lights, embrace the whole developmental arc. This is actually quite a wonderful thing to see, because the moon in a water sign begins everything, and this is a woman of great power and strength, and probably fertility, but great power and strength and a very strong sense of values and what's right and wrong. And she ends everything with that sun in cancer, which is a kind of wonderful maturity and security, maybe probably tied up with home and family. It's a wonderful developmental arc in between that. She's got all the other planets in points, so that a transit of a planet entering a new sign will automatically form aspects to each of these archetypes in order. So that if she's looking at transiting Mars, entering a new sign, the first, and Mars is, among other things, the planet of action, it will be Mars in a particular house in the natal chart where she probably should be paying attention and taking some significant actions. But at the same time, it will be forming an aspect to her moon, either harmonious or stressful. And that would add details according to where the moon is, its house, its sign, and so on. Each of these planetary archetypes in order, her moon and Jupiter archetypes are in the same degree at birth, which is hugely <laughs> confident, expectant, adventuresome, either internally or externally too, through travels, but certainly a very deep natural psychologist and metaphysician who is not afraid to think way outside the envelope. And she is in many ways very much her own woman and very individualistic, and she has a strong desire to fix and heal everything that comes up next with her Pluto and Virgo archetype. So she is a critical thinker because she's naturally drawn to what's wrong and what can I do to fix this? So very bright and very intuitive, <laughs> very intuitive, and also very spiritual and even psychic, I want to say, and so on. So you just read, if it's transiting Mercury going over those same planets, Mercury is saying, think about these matters. Maybe work them into what you do for a living, because it's Mercury and that rules Virgo, and so on. So you use both the transits going over these planets as a means of focusing on the natal archetypes and placement that are being activated. And this is just an easy way to see them kind of in order. Okay, so that gives you an idea not only of the structure of the developmental arc, but also 
how you can use it in interpretation. Now, here's the question we were just talking about. What I'm trying to figure out is when the, de when the developmental arc is triggered, if it's a specific planet that's doing it, for instance, Mercury, when Mercury triggers the arc, does the arc start where Mercury is in the succession, or does it start at the very beginning of the full arc? Yes, you start with the developmental arc where it is not the position of the planet in the developmental arc, mainly because what you're really looking at, you're using this as a kind of quick thumbnail shortcut to identifying transits. So you can look at a chart and see, well, Mars is at 10 degrees cancer. All right, you look at this developmental arc. 10 degrees cancer is exactly what? semi-sextile to the ascendant that's not much but it's also mars has just gone over a trine to both mercury and jupiter in this chart and mars is action so mars in cancer is going to be in her second house of financial action this can mean jobs or job searches it can mean some important banking and financial papers. It can mean the idea of looking into buying a condominium or making or buying or selling property because the sign of cancer is involved. So there you go with a way to quickly see where a transiting planet is. Jupiter now is in Taurus. So, and it's up to, what is it, around seven or eight Taurus, somewhere in there. So it's basically sextiling her Mercury and Neptune, opposite her Neptune, in fact. So Jupiter opposite the Neptune and sextiling her Mercury says, be very careful in financial arrangements, especially if you're taking out a loan and interest is involved. Make sure you're getting the best interest rate and it's not going to suddenly jump on you in two months. That kind of thing. Also, Anytime you've got Jupiter and Neptune involved in a hard aspect, watch out for get-rich-quick schemes. There is no such thing. <laughs> there never has been. So you can begin to get some very practical information just by looking at where the transits are. Saturn is getting ready to go uh, retrograde. It's in Pisces. It's going to go retrograde at just almost 8 degrees Pisces here. Well, look at that. Saturn is trining this woman's Mercury and Neptune exactly when it goes retrograde. So it's focusing on that trine. Where is Saturn in Pisces? Why, it's in her 10th house. It's on her 10th cusp. It's on the 9th house side, just a bit. So that has to do with her career structure, which is in transition because it's Pisces. And yet it's trying to Mercury and Neptune. She's going to find something that is much more fulfilling. It may be delayed because of the retrograde. Now you see how you can begin to read these things? Yeah, absolutely. Using this yeah. No, that's, that's, and it is a very good question as to kind of how do you start the whole thing off? Because any planet en entering any sign during the duration of its stay in that sign will trigger each one of these archetypes in this order over and over and over again. The moon activates this whole developmental arc every month. The sun activates this developmental arc every year in this order. Mars activates it every two years in this order. Saturn activates it every 29 and a half years. Jupiter every 12 years and so on. So you can learn things from those cycles, applying them to your developmental arc. I'm so grateful that you have taught us this technique and probably one of the single most favorable comments that we get from people is about this one. Well, to me, it's always made things pretty graphic in terms of, for example, how do you begin everything and how do you end it? In my case, my midheaven is the last, is it 28 degrees Libra? And this has always been true for me since I was a little boy, is how is this going to help my career? It's that simple. I was performing magic professionally for money 
at age 11. <laughs> but it was always about that. And it's how I, certainly as an adult, that absolutely is how I, I finish everything. My career is my home. It's my security. Yeah. Yeah. Totally get that. All right. Thank you very much. And thank you for a good question. This person actually did have a reading with Robert. And if you'd like to do that, you can find the link to that in the show notes, along with all the other things that we have going on here on the Old Soul, New Soul Astrology podcast. We'll see you next time with Robert Glasscock. Thanks so much for listening.